Hi friends, it's Sarah from RuffleZenRainBoots.com here with some paintbrush gnomes like no other. We're making a reversible Christmas set of paintbrush gnomes with a canvas. If you'd like to make them, just boop, stick around. As always, please like this video so I know you're here crafting with me and as always, thank you for being here. So as you can see, I decorated one with sort of a really textured beard on a vintage side and one very traditional holiday colors on the other. I don't want to do what everyone else is doing by covering up the paintbrush handle, so I'm gonna paint. What I used is a whole bunch of different colors of paint because I made four of them all at once. I'm using for this Christmas one a three inch Dollar Tree gnome, or I'm sorry, Dollar Tree paintbrush. We're gonna use some smaller brushes, water, glue gun, scissors, wood beads for a nose, and gesso. So I'm also going to be using some fabric paint, and that's optional, and a sanding block. So the first thing I did was I used some fabric scissors that were no longer sharp enough for fabric scissors, but like totally still work. So I used those and cut off the bottom of my paintbrush in a V shape. Now, as you can see, it's a little messy, but if I had to do it again, I'd actually just go put it on the saw because it would be quick and easy. You could tape the paintbrush and just zip get it done. All right, so once you have those cut, just clean up your space so none of that gets into your beautiful paint. And by beautiful, I mean I'm using gesso because we buy it on buckets <laughs> over at Amazon because we use it a lot. I use it a lot as my base layer for Dollar Tree, wood blanks. I use it a lot for everything because it's an inexpensive paint, has pretty good coverage. If you don't have gesso, use chalk paint. That also has good coverage. But we're going to create multiple layers layers on the bottom of this so that the bristles become very stiff, don't move, and can support the weight of the paintbrush. I, in between each coat, used a heat gun because I'm impatient, uh, <laughs> but you don't have to. Again, I painted that handle so everything became white all on this side, and then I just turned it over and did it again on the other side. You don't have to do this if you're not creating reversible brushes, but Everybody always asks me what the back looks like, so here you go. So once you have this done, might as well make up a few. If you're doing this for a Christmas party or something, I absolutely recommend doing this part in advance. For the dimension on the vintage side, I used puffy paint. So this is just puffy paint from my daughter's fabric paint stash and white. You don't have to use white. Um, I just don't even know why I picked that up. If you have an ugly color that you see on sale, grab it because we're just going to paint over it. So I filled in that little mustache part um, after I created these little squiggles just to give the beard a little dimension. We're going to use a really cool painting technique on this side. So as that side is drying, I painted Waverly's plaster, which is just an off-white, all along the handle. I hit it with a heat gun and then did a second coat on that. And you may say, Sarah, there's no cream, but there is. I'm going to show you how. With a sanding block. <laughs> I know you can't guess what's coming. All right, next day, this is what the puffy paint did. So you can see the mustache part kind of flattened a little bit. It's still textured, but I decided that wasn't enough texture for me because huh, I'm extra. And so I decided to go over it again. All right, so once that was done, I just went over all of the little lines again. Again, they, they dried with a puff, just not as pronounced as I wanted. Once that was dry, I used black paint. Hear me out. Gray paint in itself is a flat color, but when you layer colors in painting, oh, the dimension just pops out and all these really cool textures come out. So I just painted the front and half of the sides of the brush in black and then hit it with a heat gun, but I didn't make it all the way dry. I left a little bit of the paint wet at the top and you'll see why. When I add some white paint on top, I'll pull down that gray all the way through. 
Isn't that cool? And if it gets too gray, you just add a little bit more white on there. But we, when we look at this in person, it is so cool because there's all these different depths and bumps and ridges. I think it looks really neat. It's totally optional. I was getting my second Audible book for the day. Add a little black paint to that same red we're using on the other side, that holiday Christmas red, to get this beautiful vintage red. I actually really love this color. Isn't that cool? And as you can imagine, I painted the sides with this color because I really liked the, the look of this color a little more than that bright red. Once it was dry, I used a sanding block to bring out a little bit of scuff on the front and sides, just a little. And then on the back, I painted it that very, very bright Christmas red. I believe that's the actual paint color. It's called Christmas red. It's like Technicolor red. All right, so hit it with a heat gun, do a second coat for that as well. And then I just wanna make sure that I'm not going over my vintage red on the sides. So just pick your favorite and do the sides as well. For the noses, absolutely use wood beads. If your stash has more wood beads than it does wood rounds without the holes, we can cover them easily. I glued that wooden bead to the ferrule, not to the brushes, and then I cut a small piece of off-white Sherpa fleece. I got this at Joann's, and if you're always, I always get questions about Sherpa fleece. You can go online and see what colors they have. Sometimes they'll ship to the store. Sometimes they have it in store. Just see if your craft stores have them. So on the glue for this, I just glued it halfway along the sides, tucking the cut ends under. And I glued it to the top of the nose and all along the ferrule. And then I did on the other side as well, glued on my little bead, cut my piece of fabric, which is a little too long, and then just glued it on, tucking that end down into the other fabric, there you go, and then gluing across the nose, and then all along that ferrule, all the way up, and then all along the side as well. So if you just push it in, even though it's too long, you can cut it off and then tuck it down. Sherpa fleece is extremely forgiving. All right, so I'm using holly green. It's a very bright green. I think it's holiday green, not holly green, but I needed a darker green. I didn't have it, so I mixed that really bright green <laughs> with black as well. And then that gave me this deep, deep green. Now I did end up doing two coats for each of these holly leaves. And um, yeah, I just looked at a picture on my phone and painted these. Again, not an artist. If you have Christmas fabric lying around, cut out the little pattern pieces and decoupage them onto the handle. If you have tissue paper that's really festive for the holidays, decoupage that onto the handle. You don't have to paint these little designs like if you don't want to paint them. On the summer one, I did a little like flamingo. It's like super fun and easy. Uh, whatever you're comfortable with, you can do. All right, so hit that with a heat gun as well. I used darker red from the other side to create three little berries. And then I used a bamboo skewer to add highlights and <laughs> to outline the entire holly pieces so that they really popped against that bright red. And yeah, I am using a bamboo skewer. Why? Because I normally raid my daughter's dash of art supplies when I need like a really tiny paintbrush, but I couldn't find any. And I don't know if it's because we had already packed it for the move. I made these like a long time ago, um, maybe April. So I, I have no idea why I used a skewer, but here's the thing. It works really well to outline tiny things. So in a pinch. All right. So then I hit that with a heat gun as well. Now here is my big, big tip. Always varnish anything you paint especially something you're actually going to put away and store. Liquitex is my favorite brand. You put it into a separate jar so that in case you have any color transfer, it doesn't contaminate the entire bottle. You just use a wide brush and get a nice gloopy, gloppy coat on there and then brush it until you can't see the brush marks. Hit it with a heat gun, do it again, really cover your anything that you painted. Uh, this is my favorite brand. I know I'm asked that a lot. It, you can just get it on Amazon. And I'm done. What do you think? 
Let me know in the comments, will you make these? I happen to love them, but would love to hear from you. As always, thank you for being here. Please like, share, and subscribe for more crafty fun.